You probably noticed in the last video that I purposely stopped at the element calcium on the periodic table when we introduced electron configurations. So in today's video, we're going to go past calcium. And the reason that I stopped at calcium is because in general, we follow the periodic table. And we, again, we stopped right there at calcium. Okay. And you follow the order on the periodic table, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, etc. The part where, not the time, but it does get a little bit challenging after you get to calcium because you notice that you're in the 4s subshell here. But then after that, this next subshell that comes afterwards is the 3d subshell. And you'll notice that across the board, 5s, and then you go to 4d, and then 6s, 5d, 7s, 6d, etc. Okay, so the one thing that you have to remember is that anytime you enter the d subshell, the 3d, 4d, 5d, or 6d subshell, that that is always one subshell behind the 4s and the 4p. Okay, and it's actually correct. Okay, it's not like, wait, did they mess up? No. These electrons here are in the fourth shell, these electrons here are in the third shell. And these electrons here are in the four shell. So let's say we're looking at this element right here, okay, which is the element bromine. Okay, so let's say we're looking at bromine. And I ask you, hey, how many electrons are in that very last shell? Sometimes we call those the valence electrons. How many electrons are in that very last shell? Well, these ones here don't count because they're in the third shell. So the electrons that are in the last shell are in the 4p subshell and the 4s subshell. Okay, for now, all that you need to remember is that anytime you go into the d subshell, it's always one shell less than the s and the p subshells surrounding it. Okay, so when we look at iron, iron is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, now we're at calcium right here, right? And then we go 3D and iron is right here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's 3D6. And if we had kept going, if we had gone like over here to bromine, we would go 3D all the way up to 10 and then 4P5. Okay, so let's look at zinc. Zinc is in the same period as iron so zinc would also be 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 4s2 3d and again because zinc is down here at the very end of that 3d subshell it is a completely filled subshell so it is 3d 10. Okay, and then we talked about bromine a minute ago, so let's keep going here. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, and now back to the fourth shell, 4p, and bromine's in the fifth spot here in that 4p subshell, so it's 4p5. Okay, zirconium. Zirconium is actually right here on the periodic table so we've got to go through bromine and then keep going so 1s2 2s2 2p6 and sometimes i just like to stop every now and then just say okay where are we right now what element is 1s2 2s2 2p6 neon okay so 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 4s2 we're at calcium right now 3d10 we're now at zinc 4p6 gets us to krypton and then we're going to go after 4p we go to 5s2 so right now we are right here at 5s2 and now we just have to get to zirconium so we're just going to go 4d2 Okay, and then again, look at how spread out uh, that fourth shell is. Fourth shell, fourth shell, fourth shell. Pretty spread out. And again, that doesn't really matter. But if I ask you right now, how many electrons are in the fourth shell? 
you're going to go 2 plus 6 plus 2 is 10. If I say how many are in the fifth shell, you're going to say 2. Okay, how many are in the third shell? Well, third, 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 18. Okay, so you can look at that shell at the beginning and determine how many electrons are in that shell all total. Now, a lot of times, you, hey, what about these ones down here at the bottom? Okay, the F subshell. The F, F subshell, similar to the D subshell and that the numbers are behind. I'm gonna tell you right now though, I'm not gonna ask you about writing electron configurations in the F subshells. It's not that difficult. Basically after 6S, you go down to 4F. After 4F, you come back up to 5D, just like the order of the periodic table goes. It's kind of ugly because it does go 6S2 and then 4F14, then 5D10 and then back to 6P. But again, I'm not gonna ask you about the F subshells. Okay, what I am gonna ask you about is what happens when you have ions? I know we've already talked about ions, but remember that atoms can gain and lose electrons pretty easily. And when they gain or lose electrons, guess what? Of course that affects the electron configuration, okay? So for example, if we talk about sulfur with a minus two charge, it's not a sulfur atom anymore. It's now a sulfur anion, an ion of sulfur with a negative charge. And that minus two, if we remember correctly, means that it gained two electrons. So we can start out by writing regular sulfur and sulfur with a minus two charge just means we're gonna add two more to it. So regular sulfur is this, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p4. But with two extra electrons, what happens? Well, instead of 3p4, if the electrons will fit, we just put them in there, and so now it becomes 3p6. Okay, what if you have Na plus? Well, now that means that you have lost, in this case, one electron. And if you've lost that one electron, that means you take one electron away. So regular sodium, an atom of sodium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. But if I take that one electron away, now that whole subshell is gone. So now it's just 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Again, notice that that 3s subshell, you don't write 3s0. You would never do that. Okay, so hydrogen with a minus one charge means that it's now has two electrons. So that would be instead of 1s1, it'd be 1s2. Okay, oxygen with a minus two charge. And again, you can always do this by going, starting with normal, 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. You can start by writing the normal electron configuration of oxygen and then go, oh, well now I gotta add two more. So it's gonna be 2p6. Okay, potassium with a plus one charge means it's lost one. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 3s2, 3p6, 4s1 is normal potassium, but then we take one away and that whole electron's gone and so is the 4s subshell, so it just ends in 3p6. Okay, calcium with the plus two charge should be 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. That's normal cal or carbon, not calcium, sorry, normal carbon. We take those two away though and it just becomes 1s2, 2s2. Okay, aluminum with a plus three charge, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p1, but we have to lose three electrons. So that loses, we just lose one electron there, but now we have to lose two more. So we lose all of those. So aluminum three plus looks just like oxygen with a minus two charge. Okay, and that's actually something we're gonna talk about later. Notice that O2 minus and Al3 plus have the exact same electron configuration. A fancy word for that, which I think we'll talk about later, it's called isoelectronic, okay? So it's two species, two different species with the same number of electrons, okay? So you could say that O2 minus and Al3 plus are both isoelectronic. Okay, and then P3 minus 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p3, it should be, but add three more, makes it 3p6. Okay, the tough part is, and this is, this is the most difficult part with electron configuration, okay? 
So, the, and the tough part is, is what happens when you're in that D subshell? Like we just talked about, when you're doing the electron configuration with a D subshell, that D subshell is always one shell behind. Okay, if you're taking electrons away, so say you've got, here's the nucleus and you've got some electrons out here. Let's say another atom is going to come along and it's going to take two of these electrons. Which two is it going to take away? It's going to take the two away that are the farthest from the nucleus, which are in the furthest shell. So I would probably say they're going to take this electron right here and this electron right here. Well, going back to zirconium, which electrons are the farthest ones from the nucleus? The ones in the fourth shell or the ones in the fifth shell? Well, first shell, second shell, third shell, fourth shell, you get the idea. The bigger the shell, the farther away from the nucleus you get. So these electrons are actually farther away from the nucleus, even though in terms of the electron configuration, you write them before those 4D electrons. So the italicized part is the important part, okay? When an electron is removed from an atom, creating a cation. So anytime you take electrons away, the electrons that are removed must, must be removed from the shell that is farthest from the nucleus, which might be the last ones in the electron configuration, but as we just saw, they might not be. Okay, so iron and iron 2 plus. Regular iron, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d6. Okay, now even though the third 3D subshell comes last when we write the order, because that's just how the order is on the periodic table, what are the last electrons? What are the furthest electrons from the nucleus? The ones in the fourth shell. So this is an example of the 3D subshell appearing last, but we know that the forest subshell is actually farther away from the nucleus. Okay, kind of like the planets. Okay, Earth is the third planet. Mars is the fourth planet. Mars is farther away from the sun than the Earth is. The forest subshell is farther away from the nucleus than the third D, third, 3D subshell. So notice how this is written. Notice what's missing here. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. There's something missing right there. Okay, those 4s2 electrons are now gone because if iron's going to lose two electrons, which it does very, very easily, those two electrons that it loses are the ones that are the farthest ones from the nucleus. Okay, if you're writing iron 3 plus though, now what are the first two that you take away? You take away those 4s2 electrons again first. But now you only have this left. Now you can start taking that last one away. So iron 3 plus, notice what it looks like. The 4s2 electrons are still gone, but now that 3d uh, you've lost one electron from that 3D subshell as well. Okay, so let me do a couple of these for you and then I'll let you do some as well. So titanium, and I, whenever I do this, whenever I see an element that has a positive charge, I always, and I highly recommend this to you as well, because even my AP kids struggle with this, I always write the full electron configuration first. So titanium, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, this is number 22. By the way, don't confuse titanium with thallium, okay? Uh, thallium's number 81. You don't have to write that one. So titanium, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, gets me to calcium, and then 3d2. Okay, that's normal ground state atom titanium. So now I have to take two electrons away, though. Which two do I take away? Now I look for what's my biggest number? What's my largest shell? There it is right there. There's the fourth shell. And it says take two away because it has a plus two charge. So what do I do? I just take those two away. And again, on a test, I would recommend using a pencil, something like that, 3D2. It looks just like that. Okay, yttrium, number 39 on the periodic table. Again, regular yttrium, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, 5s2, and then 4d1. Okay, and again, it has a plus two charge, and it's so easy to mess this up. 
Uh, and so with a plus two charge, you're, you're going to really want to take that one away. But you can't because that's in the fourth shell. This is in the fifth shell. So those are the two electrons that have to go away. And then the 4D1, what happens to that? Nothing. It's still there. Okay, manganese with a plus seven charge. 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6, 4S2, 3D5. So we got to take seven away. So the first two we take away are those two. But now we got to take five more away. Now everything else is just in that third shell. Now we can take some of these away. And we got to take all five of those away. So what does manganese 7 plus look like? Just that right there. Okay, gallium with the 2 plus charge. This is a tricky one here, okay? So gallium, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, and then 4p1. So we got to take two electrons away here. Again, real easy to make that mistake. So sometimes if you're like, well, I, I always struggle with this, underline, okay, underline, okay, those are the ones that are the farthest ones away, the 4P1 and the 4S2, okay? So I have to take two away. So I'm gonna take that one away, and now the next one I take away, it has to be one of these right here, that 4S, so that's gonna become 4S1. Okay, so the 4P is completely gone. And it is 4S1, 3D10. I know it looks kind of funny, but that is exactly how you do it. Okay, germanium, which is right next to gallium, very similar. 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6, 4S2, 3D10, 4P2. Now we got to take four away. So again, what am I, what's my farthest shell? The fourth S, the four and the four, the 4S and the 4P. So I got to take four away. So I'm going to take those two away first, and then I take those two away. Okay, and that is correct. So I'm going to move that 3D10 over. Okay, and that is honestly, that is the hardest thing that you're going to do with electron configuration. Let's practice that a little bit in your homework assignment.